Hello and welcome to our nature program. Who's at the bird feeder? I'm hearing an echo. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm Jennifer Smith, the Youth Services Coordinator for Lexington County Public Library, and I'll be moderating today's presentation. As you join, uh, please be sure to make a note in our chat. If you happen to be watching with more than one person, we like to have an accurate count of how many people have watched our uh, presentation, and that helps us plan future presentations. Also, um, I'm going to be popping in the chat in just a second a survey monkey survey that um, we ask all attendees to uh, complete. And this is a, a very short survey and it's really important for both myself and our presenter today uh, to have to help us fund and plan future programs. So if you could just take a minute to fill that survey out when I post it in the chat. Um, if also, if you happen to have any questions for our presenter, go ahead and post those in there. And as we have time, I'll uh, interject and see if we can get those answered. So today our presenter is Erica Jones. She is from Lexington County uh, 4-H. She is the Youth Development Agent. And today's presentation will be recorded and shared along with the PowerPoint slides that Erica will be sharing. And um, those are in the handouts tab, if you happen to see that and they will be shared on our YouTube and Facebook pages along with today's video. If you haven't stopped by one of our 10 branches to pick up one of the Make a Take kits for today's journal, uh, please do so while supplies last. We have those and Erica will be showing us how to make our bird watching journal today. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to her as I post the uh, link to our survey and Erica, <laughs> It's all yours. <laughs> Hi, so um, like Ms. Jennifer said, my name is Erica. I'm the Lexington County 4-H agent, and we are gonna do some backyard birding today. Um, so let me share my screen. Sweet, okay. So uh, backyard birding or bird watching. Um, so today we're gonna learn how to identify the different kinds of birds that frequent your backyard and learn how to log what you see. Um, in the United States and Canada alone, there are more than 800 different species of birds. Um, so it can feel kind of overwhelming if you're a beginner bird watcher, but today we're gonna kind of figure out where to begin. And as you get more advanced in bird watching, um, you can start using field guides um, to kind of help you identify some of the species that look more similar. Um, so this, these birds look kind of different down here at the bottom, um, but they're actually the same species of bird. The very bright red one, I'm sure we've all seen, um, that is a northern cardinal. Um, that's a male northern cardinal. The brown bird, uh, that's actually a female northern cardinal. So a lot of times in birds and other species of animals too, the females are not as brightly colored as the males because the males need to attract a mate. So the males will be a lot more brightly colorful or a lot more brightly colored and a lot more vocal than the females will be unless the females are uh, protecting a nest or some eggs. Um, so think of birds that you see in your backyard, and if you can, identify one that you see normally. I feel like everybody can probably identify the cardinal because he's so bright. Um, but have you ever thought about how many birds look alike, or look like the one that you might know? So this guy, the Carolina Wren, I think that he kind of looks like a different bird um, that we'll look at on the next slide called the Carolina Chickadee. Um, and his beak, the beaks of some birds look really similar and we'll talk about why that is so but sometimes if they have similar shaped beaks they um can look very similar and be hard to figure out which one is which so take a picture or take a look at the pictures below to see some of the most common bird species in your backyard um, and you can discuss with your family how the birds compare and contrast and what kind of birds you might see in the mountains or what kind of birds you might see at the beach so we all live in the Midlands, so it's not super common for us to see seagulls hanging out in our backyards. Um, 
other birds that wouldn't be super common to see in our backyards that live in the mountains would be like we see some hawks and we see some bald eagles around here but they're more popular in the upstate um to, the only time i've ever seen an eagle in the midlands is if i've been at the river so these are some really common types of birds that we see and i have it broken down by percentage um, of how frequently they're seen in south carolina this is from the Audubon website. The Carolina chickadee is this one. Um, this is actually, the Carolina wren is the state bird, um, this little brown guy down here. Um, and then this gray bird is a northern mockingbird. So this bird will mimic other birds' songs, um, which is cool. Kind of like the mockingjay if you've seen the Hunger Games. Um, but the Carolina chickadee is actually the most popular we see not the Carolina wren. We also have the tufted titmouse, the morning dove. They're, I really like doves. I think they're super pretty. Um, we've also got the yellow rumped warbler. I think they're cool looking too. And the yellow rumped warblers, the females don't have as much yellow on them. Um, we also have the American crow um, or the raven. The males and females look exactly the same. They're the, the calling birds that hang out around fields a lot. These are why we have scarecrows to keep the crows off of crops. Um, a red-bellied woodpecker is this guy with the red cap on his head. The females don't have the red cap, but I think that their wing pattern is really cool. Their wing pattern kind of looks like some tree bark. So the females without this red cap on their head, it kind of helps them blend in a little bit. Then we got the Northern Mockingbird again. Um, like I said, this is the one that can mimic other birds' songs. Then over here we've got the blue jay, and the bright blue is a male. The gray one behind him is a female blue jay. So another example of a bird that um, the females look kind of different than the males. Then we've got a white-throated sparrow. Um, all kinds of sparrows are, are pretty common in South Carolina, um, especially like a song sparrow down here at the bottom right, or like a barn sparrow. The Eastern bluebird, again, the males are way more brightly colored. So um, the male on this one is on the right and the female is the more gray. The American Robin, we see those not as much, but they sing really pretty. I love Robins. Then we've got American Goldfinch. They are really pretty. Really, really, really bright yellow, but they're not super common. House Finch, these will get in your attic and take over your house. That's why they're called that. And then the Song Sparrow, and they tweet a lot. Um, the Robins and Song Sparrows are gonna be the ones that we hear in the morning. Another way that you can identify birds um, is not just by their color and what they look like, but by their feet, um, if you can see them, and by their beaks. And their feet and beaks are different shapes because they do different things. So, um, like this top one, that's a duck foot. Um, this is meant for swimming. Um, so they have webbed toes so that their feet are like flippers, like you would put on if you were going to go snorkeling. And they also have this kind of beak because they filter through the water to get food. Um, so it makes sense that they have swimming feet if they need to eat in the water. And then um, this guy, I'm not 100% sure what kind of bird this, oh, this is probably a hummingbird beak. Um, the feet, I'm not 100% sure what kind of foot this is, but um, the feet are semi-webbed, so they're really wide toes, but they're not fully webbed like the um, duck's foot is. Some people have like semi-webbed toes too, which is cool. Um, but this is for one that's going to walk on land or swim. And then the hummingbird beak is really long and skinny. It's meant for probing flowers so that they can get their beak down into the flower and get the nectar that's at the base of the flower. This is going to be like the, um, let me go back, like the sparrow and our little Carolina chickadee. This little tiny beak is meant for catching insects. Um, so that's what they eat. And 
little feet like this that don't have much webbing are meant for walking. And of course, all these guys can fly, but um, their feet are spread out so they can get good traction. Um, this is the Cardinal. He's got a big wide beak. The skinny beak would help the guy that needs to catch insects because if the insect goes into a hole, their beak can fit down in the hole. Um, the big wide beak is strong, powerful, and it's meant to crack seeds open. So these guys are seed eaters with these big wide beaks. These are going to be the ones that you see mostly at the bird feeder. Um, and if they have longer toes, longer claws or talons, then it's meant for perching. So that makes sense that he would come to your bird feeder and he's got these big long toes to wrap around the perch and sit there. Um, this is going to be a falcon or hawk or bald eagle. They have a beak with a sharp point on the end or even like um, a vulture, like a turkey vulture. They're kind of ugly. You see them on the side of the road a lot. Um, they're going to have a big long beak with a point on the end and these are predatory birds. So they eat meat. Um, they're going to, vultures are opportunistic eaters. So they eat other dead animals a lot of the time. Um, but hawks, falcons, bald eagles, uh, they catch live prey um, in like the mountains and stuff. Bald eagles will catch fish. Um, so they eat meat and they have really strong, big claws and, or feet and long talons that are meant to grab prey and scoop them up. And then um, this long, thick beak is what we're gonna see on our woodpeckers. Um, that's meant for drilling holes into trees. Sorry about that. So that they can eat the bugs from inside the tree trunk. And um, they have feet that are meant for climbing. So that's a little bit different than our perching one because the toes are more evenly spread out where our perching guy has three toes in the front and one in the back. And so the cracking seeds birds that we're gonna see at our bird feeder is gonna be like the house finch, the American goldfinch, the song sparrow. So you'll see all these birds or you can see all these birds in your backyard, but these are the ones that are gonna be at your bird feeder. Um, the sometimes the tufted titmouse will come um the yellow rumped warbler and the blue jay they're more of an insect eater but i've seen them at our bird feeder before too another thing that you might see at your bird feeder that you gotta watch out for is squirrels they're so smart and they will figure out how to open it we've tried every single type of bird feeder and i feel like a squirrel always gets into it so don't be shocked if you catch some squirrels at your bird feeder too um, so before you go bird watching, you're going to need a way to record. So if you have your nature journal supplies, we're going to assemble it really quick and I'll just kind of go through it, the pages with you because there's way more to do in here than just bird watching. So on your, um, nature journal, you should have two holes. Mine doesn't have holes because, um, I thought I had a hole puncher at home and I don't but you're just gonna loop your string through the two holes and tie a knot. So let me reshare my screen, just like this. So you'll just go through each hole and then tie a little knot. You can tie a bow if you want, and that will keep your nature journal together. And then once you have it together, on the first page you can um, write your name just in case you drop it somewhere you don't want to lose all your information that you've worked so hard to collect um and you can also i left the blank the cover blank so that you can draw whatever you want on it you can use that as extra space to log some birds if you want um the second page is really important because when you're outside there are some kind of some plants that uh, can make you super itchy if you touch them so it has a picture of poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac. Um, poison sumac kind of looks like a fern, so make sure you, you really look at it. But if you touch these, they'll make you very, very, very itchy. So try to avoid those if you can. Um, some other things that you can do besides bird watch in your nature journal is you could go on a nature walk. So whenever we're um, bird watching, we're using um, two of our five senses mainly. We're gonna look at the birds, we're gonna use our eyes, and some birds you can identify by the type of song that they sing, so we're gonna use our ears too. But on a nature walk, you can use all five senses except taste, because it's not safe to taste things that 
are in nature because they might be poisonous, but they also have germs and insects and stuff on them. But try to spend some time outside and record um, what you see, what you hear, what you smell, and what you feel. So um, you could go by a waterway, you could see some really cool birds if you go by like a pond or a stream, or you could even just go in your backyard and sit in your backyard and just sit and close your eyes and feel the grass. Or if you're like me and you don't have that much grass, you can feel the ground. <laughs> um, and just listen to what kinds of birds you hear without even using your eyes to see them. You might hear some squirrels running around. If you have dogs like me, you might hear your dogs running around. So just take a couple minutes to decompress and just use your senses to see what's outside. I feel like everybody could use some out time after outside time after us being cooped up for a year. Um, the next page is nature art. So um, you can make uh, any kind of nature themed art. So on the page there's some examples of, examples of somebody made a fish out of just um, things that they like leaves and it looks like berries and flower petals. Um, somebody made a rainbow out of flower petals. You can make insects, you can make birds out of things that you find on the ground. Just some kind of nature themed art with things that you find outside. And then the next page is for some leaf rubbings. Leaf rubbings are super cool. I really like doing them. Um, so you'll just get a bunch of different kinds of leaves and you can put them under a page of your journal. Um, and you can use a crayon and just color over it or you can even use a pencil and then um, just take the leaf out and you'll have a nice print of the leaf. And you find a leaf that's, if you can find a leaf that's really stemmy and has really hard veins on the back, it makes a cool leaf, a really cool leaf rubbing. Ferns also make really cool leaf rubbing. And then after that, you have a bunch of blank pages. So you can use the blank pages to record the birds that you see. Um, so after we're done, go pick a spot and start making some observations. So you could go outside and do your um, nature walk and then just pick a spot and start seeing what, what's out there. Or it's kind of toasty today, so you could always sit by a window and do the same thing. But you're going to want to be very quiet and very still and keep your eyes peeled because sometimes they'll land and just take right back off. Um, but if you're really noisy or really wiggly, especially if you're outside, um, they're not going to want to come hang out. Um, so if you can't really be super still, maybe sit by a window at first so you can really see what's out in your backyard. And if you want to sketch or make a list of as many birds as possible, uh, some key things to look for when you're observing is the shape and size of the bird. Don't just look at the body. You want to look at the features on the feet or the beak like we talked about. Looking at the features on the feet and the beak can help you identify the bird. Um, the color pattern, you want to look for light and dark colors, bold and faint colors, so like the cardinal, the male is going to be very dark, bright red, and then the female is going to be more a gray with like a touch of red. And some birds even have crazy colors. Um, when I was researching birds that we see commonly in South Carolina, one of them, I don't know where they saw this bird, but it said that there's something as a Carolina parakeet and it's a, a parakeet. They're like lime green. I've never seen one of those, but maybe you will. Um, you want to look for their behavior. So their posture, their movement, their flight pattern, their feeding style and flocking. So flight pattern would be like a good example would be a geese. They fly in a V. Some birds will fly in a straight line following each other. Some birds are just hanging out by themselves. And flocking would be, how many birds do you see together? Just one? Ten? A hundred? I don't know. Um, and then habitat. So what plants are around the bird? Um, is there water? Is it in a tree? So if you have a bird bath, you'll have some that, that love to come hang out. Um, you might not necessarily find a swimming bird in your bird bath, like a duck or anything, unless you have a pond, but some will like to come hang out in the bird bath. And if you do have access to a pond, it'd be cool to go compare the birds that you see in your backyard versus the birds that you see at the pond, because they might be different, they might be the same. 
And then for some bonus fun, you can complete your logs using the scientific names of birds you see. Um, every animal has a scientific name. Um, like we call dogs dogs, but their scientific name is canine. So you might have to use the internet to find out the scientific name of your bird once you've identified it with the regular name. Um, and if you have a smartphone or a tablet, there's a couple of bird watching apps that are free. Um, the first one's from Cornell Lab, and the second one is from the Audubon Bird Guide. I think the Audubon Bird Guide has a field guide in it, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but the Cornell Lab will let you log the birds that you see, and other people can, um, you can look and see, compare what you see versus what other people see in our area. And then the Audubon Bird Guide website um, is a really cool place because you can look up the birds that you see and it will tell you if those birds are in our area all the time or if they're just here for migration or for breeding because not all of those birds are going to be here 100% of the time. Sometimes they're just passing through. Um, the specific one is the hummingbird. They are not here all the time, but there's tons of charts where you can see they put out a chart every year of the dates that they think they're going to be in our area so you can put out some hummingbird feeds for them. Do we have any that, questions in the chat? There weren't any questions in the chat, but I, I did think that that, I never knew that about hummingbirds. That would explain a lot that I put out yeah. hummingbird, you know, I have one of those with the red juice that you mix yeah. and you put out there and that explains a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they normally come through this year, they came through in like May and so we always put out ours then so that they can refuel and keep going um, but man we have a time keeping squirrels off of all of our bird feeders. They are uh, nuisance. Yeah. Yeah, do we you have any have, suggestions for that? <laughs> they have some bird feeders now that are like a plastic tube with like a wire thing around it with little bird perches. And um, if a squirrel gets on it, it makes it go down and it covers the seed hole because the squirrel's too heavy. Um, but our squirrels are really smart and they figured out really fast that they can't sit on it to get the food. So they figured out how to open it from the top. Oh, wow. <laughs> and one time, um, I got up one morning and we had a raccoon hanging off of it. So uh, the jury's out on the squirrel thing. <laughs> They're too smart for their own good. They really are, yeah. I have a hard time keeping them away from my bird feeders. <laughs> we have a bird bath though. They leave that alone. But um, Oh, and if you want to make your own bird feeder, it'll definitely be hard to keep the squirrels off. But um, if you have any pine cones in your backyard and any nut butter at home, um, it's pretty sticky at first, so you can get some pine cones um, and just smear peanut butter on them, and then you'll need to go get some bird seed. But while the peanut butter is still wet and sticky, you can roll it in some bird seed and just tie it up with um, like fishing wire or yarn. Uh, that's a great, super easy, super fast bird feeder, and they do come to it because um, they want the seeds and they want the peanut butter. But like I said, that one. No guarantee that you can keep the squirrels off, but it's a pretty cheap one. So if the squirrels rip it up, it's just, just going to make up. another one. <laughs> we did have one uh, question that just popped up in the chat. <laughs> I think I can guess the answer, but let's see. It's from Mason Gore, and he wants to know why bald eagles are called bald eagles. <laughs> it's because they have a white head. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking yeah. it was because the white feathers make them look they like have bald. A, a white head. It makes them look bald. A lot of times um, you can see those at the river, but I've never seen one like at my house or anything. Um, but I do see them when we go like kayaking and tubing. We'll see them across going across the river. Um, we have a lot of hawks at our house, though. So be careful if you have chickens because they will come pick them up, have a little yeah. snack. Yeah, we have chickens at our house and the hawks like to hang out, but then we ended up with crows and the crows seem to have scared the hawks away, which is interesting, but I don't know if that's... <laughs> crows, they are a nuisance too. They're just as bad as the squirrels because they're really smart. 
Um, crows are actually the smartest animal on Earth. Really? They're smarter than monkeys. Mm -hmm. There's a documentary that uh, monkeys can like sign and all that kind of stuff, but monkeys can't use tools like a crow can. Mm -hmm. uh, and crows have an excellent memory. So there's a study that they did where they there was like a box and the crow had to figure out how to open the box. So it got the box open and then they just kept adding steps and tools that the crow had to use to get the box open and it could learn how to pick up a tool and use it to get the box open to get the food. Um, and then they did another study with little baby crows and the researchers would go in and be nice to them. And then they would put a mask on and they would go in and they would scare them. And when the crows were grown, um, if you put the same mask on, they would freak out and try to like attack the person with the mask on. But if the researcher just went in with their normal face, they were totally calm. Huh. They have really good memories and they are really smart. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. A lot of people have like a gorilla or a tank or something or chimps, but it's actually a crow. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Forgot to put that in. <laughs> yeah. Um, they don't like shiny stuff, though, if you're trying to keep them off your vegetables. Oh, yeah. So, CDs. Those are a great way to keep them off. Old CDs. Pie pans. Yeah, yeah I've seen the pie pans, yeah. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought the pie pan was because of the noise. I didn't realize it was... The noise and the the CDs are for like the reflectiveness. Um, nobody really uses CDs anymore, so we have a bunch in our garden. <laughs> well, I, haven't, work that. <laughs> I haven't seen any more uh, questions in the chat. If you do have a question uh, for Erica, please make sure you post it. Our time is running, running out, um, and make sure that you go and uh, check out that link to the Survey Monkey. Um, I posted it in the chat and um, it is in the questions as well. So you can go to surveymonkey.com and then it's capital G 5 Z F C 5 5. That's the survey. And that is really important for both um, the library, Lexington County Public Library, and uh, the Lexington 4 H so that we can know how to better plan for programs and um, better fund them and uh, keep you know those kind of programs going for our community oh i see some questions um we <laughs> have a few more minutes so erica um carolyn hartman wants to know why do hummingbirds flap their wings so hard i let's consult the google <laughs> I don't know. I don't pretend. I don't pretend to know everything, and I Google a lot. So let's see what it says. Mm -hmm. This just says that they flap their wings um, ten to more than eighty times per second while hovering. So I'm, I, they must flap their wings so hard when they're hovering at your feeder so that they don't start sinking. Um, and sometimes they will flap their wings even faster when they're trying to attract a mate. And they can also fly up to 30 miles an hour. They're very fast. Wow. So they must flap so hard and so fast to stay hovering up at their your bird feeder or at a flower. Um, but birds are cool because they fly because they have hollow bones. Um, we have bones full of marrow. They don't have any marrow in their bones, and that's how they're able to fly. Um, but humming, hummingbirds are cool. They're some of my favorites. Um, let's see. It looks like Harper. Oh, it's cutting off the rest of that name. I'm not sure. Uh, something about why do woodpeckers chop trees? Why, oh, so woodpeckers, they? <laughs> woodpeckers are pecking the tree because they're eating the bugs that are inside. Oh. like worms or termites things like that they're d drilling little holes so they can pick the bugs out that are inside they're cool though and you can hear them boy you can hear yeah. them um here's one that's interesting also and i have the same thing at my house it says we have an owl that visits before dusk is this normal um wh why are they nocturnal so 
I don't know why they're nocturnal. That's just the way they were made. Yep. But yeah, they'll come out at dusk. That's totally normal because they're awake all night. That's when they're waking up. They're just getting um, Owls are another one that you have to be careful with if you have any small pets because they will snatch them up. Um, barn owls are super common in South Carolina. Um, but they're coming out because that's when they're waking up from being asleep all day. But like, especially like if you have chicks or small dogs or outside cats, having a place for them to go at night if you have an owl is super, super, super important. Um, when I was growing up, I lived near the river and we had an owl, um, we, we had an owl in our backyard and we had cats and we had the windows open one night with the screen and the cats were sitting in the window and the owl came and grabbed onto the screen because he didn't know the screen was there and he was trying to get one of our cats. Oh, so make wow. sure that small animals have a place to go at night if you've seen an owl is very important. <laughs> wow that's <laughs> it was scary <laughs> yeah their wingspan is pretty big too so seeing it come up in the in my bedroom window i was like whoa <laughs> and my cat's like poofed out and ran away <laughs> <laughs> um let's see do we have time for just a couple more questions this yeah. i read this one wrong oh and then they sent in a a, a correction so it says why are some birds red and I they mean the color red not at first I thought it said do some birds read and I don't think birds read but they um it just depends on like the species I'm not why they're red would be like genetics um but the males specifically with the cardinal the males are red they're brightly colored to attract a female to um mate with so that they can have eggs and have baby birds the females don't have to attract a mate that's why they're lighter colored um and not being so bright colored it plays in the female's favor because birds of prey do eat other birds and if the, they're not brightly colored they can blend in a lot easier and so they're less likely to get picked up by a bird of prey um, that bright red bird is going to be a lot easier to see than a brown bird in the trees. Um, so it's kind of their, to their advantage that they're not so brightly colored. Right. That Especially makes sense. the winter time, you can pick out a cardinal like that if it ever snowed here. Um, <laughs> but they don't really have anywhere to hide then. Right. No, that makes, that makes a lot of sense that the, the females are brown so they can hide in their nests and protect yep. their their little ones um let's see the way i have this displayed i can't see people's full names um but it the question is why do birds follow each other that's an interesting question too um birds of prey are more loners than other species of birds or other types of birds but like ducks normally live together um why they do that Google. <laughs> like instinct like instinct Probably to stay together um there's power in numbers i'm assuming um but this says that flocking helps birds notice and defend against predators um as they if there's more birds they can look in different directions if there's only one bird he can only look forward or he can only look one direction at a time if there's a flock of birds one person or one bird can be looking forward, one can be looking right, left, behind, so they're kind of more covered that way. And it's a lot easier to pick out a single bird versus a whole flock of birds if a, a predator were to be trying to get them. And they flock when they migrate a lot too, but they're all going to the same place, so it's kind of so like our <laughs> Yeah, if they're all going to the same place and you live close together, you might as well take the same car. <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> well thank you so much for joining us and answering all our bird questions and yeah, sharing no the journal with us um, again as just a reminder if you haven't stopped by one of the branches um, to pick up one of those uh, bird 
journal kits. It's our take and make kit where you can make your own journal and you can uh, spend the rest of the summer outdoors looking for those different birds. And if you have any more questions, you can always come to the library and check out a bird book. <laughs> we have one or two. And if you haven't also, you can sign up for our summer reading program. So uh, we wanna thank everybody for joining us today and thank Erica one last time and remind you one last time, um, please visit that Survey Monkey and let us know um, if you have any comments, there is a comment box at the bottom of the survey so that we can know how we can improve our programs. And um, this recording will be shared later on um, along uh, on our Facebook and YouTube channels. So um, thank you again. And I hope, uh, oh, one more plug. <laughs> I hope that you are all able to join us again next month when Erica joins us again to talk about uh, what's in a brand. So if you're interested in that, please join us next month in July. All right, well, thank you so much, um, everybody. And thank you, Erica. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>